I will call the Ways and Means Committee to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Good morning, Pat? Madam the Chair. This is Elvis. Yep. Good morning. Present. Did you Commissioner Baker McCormick? Present. Commissioner Marecki? Here. Commissioner Baydoon? Here. Commissioner Anderson? Here. Vice Chair Palomero? Here. Chair Varga? Here. You have a quorum present. Thank you. Next item, please. Uh, item B, Chairwoman's remarks. I'm just glad to see everyone here, everyone uh, healthy and safe. Um, I wish you that to continue. Next item. Item C, approval of the minutes of the April 30th, 2020 meeting. Move so moved, Madam Chair. It's been moved and supported. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Item D, unfinished business, there is none. Moving to item E1, requesting commission approval of budget adjustment 2020-35-128, certifying revenue in the COVID-19 fund. Thank you. Who is here to speak on this item? Uh, I can try to answer some questions. Kelly Rao, um, budget director. Kamal is here also. Kelly. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Well. Uh, Kamal Keparu, Management and Budget, Finance Director for the Department of Health, Human and Veteran Services. This money right here, the 53000 is for our FQHC to purchase mainly equipment to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and is mostly purchasing just equipment like, not equipment, but supplies like M95 masks, the uh, disposable gowns, latex gloves, thermometers, so forth and so on. So that's you know what this is for. Do you know if we're getting the thermometers that are handheld and uh, and can uh, take temperatures from further away? Yes, I'm um, looking at it now. Well, yes, they now contact thermometers. Great. Thank you. Any questions by members? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Oh. Okay, Commissioner Martha G. Scott and then uh, Commissioner Maraki. Thank you. Thank you. How, how many qualified health centers do we have? I know I have one in Um, It's two. The other one is out um, by the airport in um, West uh, Wayne. In Actually, it's inside, it's inside the public health building. Okay. And this is for both of them? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Commissioner Marecki. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just wondering, are we getting all the supplies that we're asking for? I know um, some of the nursing homes in my area have not been able to be get, have been not able to get the gowns that uh, we thought they were gonna be able to get. So how are the supplies doing? Well, that's a different question. This is uh, um, the grant or the funds to get the supplies. I can ask the um, operation folks directly are they receiving it? Do they have an issue? You know, are they having an issue getting anything? This well, is are, we, are, are we giving them money to- Madam um, Chair. Are, Mr. Candrevis. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut off a commissioner, but um, to, to Commissioner Marecki's point, so cities and locals go through the uh, Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, CAD's third events group. Um, I can try to get you an update, Commissioner Marecki or anybody else on, you know, how those supplies have been coming or going. It, it's not, this agenda item um it's a different kind of different set of pot of supplies if you will okay so so are we giving um this facility the money to um order their own supplies or we're ordering the supplies for these facilities that today's agenda item well well one this is a the increase to grant for the fqhc now the question you just asked where they go, they where are they going to buy their supplies? I don't know if they go go to Homeland Security or through their own source. That's something I will okay. have to talk with um, Mr. Kendrivas or other oh, folks about. Okay, this, so this we're just the giving them the money. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I didn't know if we were the money was going to be to buy supplies for this facility. Okay. Thank you. And just a heads up for the for the commissioner. This is one grant, um, additional funds for the FQAC. Another one is coming down like soon. 
Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Candrevis, we would appreciate uh, just a quick email to let us know how we're doing on the supplies. Madam Chair, just, just I think Commissioner Marecki was asking about the nursing homes and such. Um, is that is that what we're looking for, Madam Chair? Uh, oh. Yeah. I'll let her speak for herself, uh, Commissioner okay. Marecki. Yeah, thank you. I know everything's broken up into regions, and unless something changed the last couple of days, I know they were waiting on supplies, like nursing, like gowns. I think, I think the county was only supplying gowns to the nursing homes, because I know Livonia is doing their own thing with some of the other one, uh, some of the other needs. Um, but when I heard uh, a couple of days ago, the gowns hadn't come in yet. So yes, in the two south regions. So yes, just, yes, yeah. And if I can, just real quick, so the health related supplies go through a different chain um okay. cat sturdy van might know how that's going might get some word on that but generally if it's a health related facility they're getting their supplies through this region through south it's a consortium um okay. it's not run by our homeland security but our homeland security does amass the things in our warehouse and then gives gives uh the metro two uh metro south or metro two um their share of the supplies that's okay. how it's working. But I'll, let me get an update. Thank I can uh, I can get something out to commissioners. Okay, thank you. And I did not mean to go off the agenda here. I didn't realize I was going off the agenda. So sorry about that, Madam Chair. That's yeah, okay. this, isn't this just for the qualified health centers? Right. Yeah, it has nothing to do with nursing homes. No, no, I know. But I thought they were somewhat related in the way they get the supplies, not the money for the health center. But I thought the way they, the supplies were distributed were somewhat connected with other entities, but I guess they're not. So thank you. I was being lenient uh, because we are all interested in all of those items. But going back to the item, any more discussion on item one in front of us? So moved, Madam Chair. It's been moved. Support. And supported. Any more discussion? I hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item, Madam Clerk. Item E2, requesting commission approval of placing the Charter County of Wayne's operating millage renewal proposition o on the ballot for the primary election to be held on August 4th, 2020. Okay, thank you. Um, who would like to start the discussion on this? Um, um, Madam Chair, uh, James Heath, Heath? Council. Uh, um, this, <coughs> this is, as the clerk indicated, this is the administration's request for the commission to approve uh, a renewal of the operating <coughs> millage uh, for a period of tw through 20, 2020 through 2029. Um, this uh, would go on the August ballot. Uh, you have the language uh, before you. I would like to uh, thank uh, Alan Helmkamp, Felicia, and, and other members of your staff who work with our office in reviewing this language and getting it uh, before you today. Uh, we have representatives from M&B uh, to the particulars re regarding the, uh, the funds that will be uh, generated from the millage, and we're available to answer whatever questions you may have, Commissioner. Thank you. I want to thank Alan and uh, Felicia as well. Do we have the language uh, corrected? So it will say cents as opposed to the dollar sign and the uh, uh, point five. So through the through the oh, chair, Felicia. Madam Chair, this is Felicia. So through the chair, I believe the language before you still have the dollar sign 0 0.95. So we would like to make a friendly amendment um, and have this approved as revised. So it'll just say 95 cents. And that'll be consistent with historically how it's been presented and written um, for, for millage language. So no, we, have, we make that amendment now with this motion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Heath, you don't have a problem with that, right? We do not. Madam Chair. Great. Um, Alan, do you have anything else to add to it? Okay. 
I yeah, guess I'm not that. sure if he's on the I'm not sure if he's on the line. Okay. Yeah. Any discussion um, by by others members first? I have a question. Commissioner Marecki. Thank you. Um, in this language, then, it's still going to be the 15% to each, each district, correct? So uh, that's related to the parks millage, which is item number three. Item number two okay. is simply operating. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Mr. Ebel? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, I have a question for Jane Pete. There, there's an operating millage that also needs to, this, this is just the uh, extra voted operating mill. When is the main operating mill? When do you expect that to, to come before Ways and Means for approval? I'm sorry, Mark, I couldn't hear you. The, the other operating millage for, for the county, uh, that should be coming to us soon for approval, shouldn't it? And is that I don't know. Let me let me let me check on the dates for you, Mark, and I'll get back to you. Okay, that's fine. Anyone else? Uh, yes, this is Commissioner McCormick. Go ahead. Uh, clarification on, uh, and I know this may not have anything to do with the, directly with the millage, but as far as the dollar amount that each district gets and its portion uh, in proportion to what is being done in the parks. Is there a way we can get the current breakdown uh, of how those monies have been spent over the last five years since we're now appropriating uh, more dollars towards parks? So, we, 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 we should be able to get you information regarding park spending, uh, Commissioner Baker McCormick, uh, as to the item that we're currently uh, looking at, just the operating agreement. I think you're referring to item number three, which is the parks renewal. Okay, great. Um, it, if we can get that, uh, that would be, if I can get that, that would be great. We have been joined by our former chair, uh, Gary Warrenchuk, and um, I'm going to allow him to answer a question. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Commissioner. Former Commissioner. Thank you, Madam Chair, and it's good to see everybody, even in this format. Uh, to, to answer Mr. Abbo's question about when the other operating millage goes before voters, it does not go before voters. It's permanent um, once it was authorized in the county charter back in 1981. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. That was one way I could recognize that you were in the public. <laughs> Anyone else uh, would like to uh, uh, have a discussion on this item? Commissioner Marecki, you're okay? Yep. Anybody else? In that case, uh, Felicia, would you give us the language that we have to uh, make the motion with? So the motion should just be made as amended, and that amendment will take place in on line two where it says currently um, about dollar sign 0 0.95 it'll simply say uh, about 9595 um so just at the motion should be ended for that particular revision commissioner palavera do you move this as amended yes i do madam chair thank you any support Support. support. It's been moved and supported. Last question. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Item E3 requesting commission approval of placement charter county of Wayne's Park Millage Renewal Proposition P on the ballot for the primary election to be held on August 4th, 2020.
Thank you. Uh, once again, Madam Chair, James Heath Corporation Council, uh, the administration is presenting to uh, the honorable body uh, request for your approval to renew the parks millage uh, for a period of five years, uh, 2021 through 2025. Uh, the language is unchanged from our previous parks millage. And so to your question, uh, Marecki, regarding 15%, that language is a part of the, uh, of the, of the language that is in front of, of this body. Uh, similar to the operating agreement, uh, imagine that uh, there'd be a friendly amendment to change the language to, um, to, to read 25 cents per uh, 25 cents as the amount uh, per mill, and we would agree to that language change as well if Felicia wants to make that. Yes, we do. Any, any discussion? Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Anderson. James, uh, what was that change again? I'm sorry. Similar to the operating agreement, and, and I'll let Felicia uh, yes, so express exactly the way she wants to, but in substance, we agreed to a change from for it to read 25 cents um, the amount of, of, the, of the mill that, per mill that would be levied for $1,000 of taxable valuation. Commissioner Anderson, we would say 25 cents with a CENT and instead of the, uh, yeah, you got it? Any more discussion? Yes, um, again, um, the question that I asked pertaining to the funds that have been uh, used over the last five years, um, is there already a existing report that outlines uh, parks that have been, or parks funds that have been used? Hi, this is Beverly. There is. <laughs> Hi, this is Beverly, Director of DPS. Uh, for clarification purposes, Commissioner, are you speaking of all funds that were used for Wayne County Park improvements as well as funds that were allocated to the commissioners per the 15% what projects have been done? Yes, and in addition, the, the breakdown of what the 15% uh, looks like because it, it um, from my understanding, it's 15% of the percentage of taxpayers in each district. So I'm trying to get a clarification on what that number is and then how the money was applied <coughs> in, and, and maybe not every district, but in particular, of course, my district. Okay. Yes, uh, and that report is generally always gener uh, generated. We could have DPS finance because they do it every year, especially at the beginning of the fiscal year. They forward it over to the parks director, Alicia Bradford. That's how she knows to generate the information to each commissioner, letting you know what your allocation is and asking you what communities you would like uh, the funding to go to. So that's that report that you're referring to that's generated by the DPS finance team. I mean, team, I can have Alicia uh, reissue it to you and everyone. Great, great. Uh, the, the last report that I recall, it really didn't outline what projects over the last five years. That, that's kind of what I'm looking for to, to see what was done and what was completed in, uh, in my district in particular. Okay, great. What she'll do, and, and uh, Alicia, she's online as well. She will contact you, but she would make sure that you get a copy of your report going back for projects that was done in your district over the five years. But what I would do is have her do it for each commissioner. That would be great. As per your request, so she can get generate that report. She has it. And then uh, as far as the 15%, what that looks like, um, is that something that would come from your department? 
when you say what it looks like, you mean uh, from from the past, or you saying no? Forward? From well, yes. What what uh, because it's saying that if there's fifteen percent of per the I'm trying to find the actual language here, but uh, the it's percentage based on the, the number of uh, dollars that taxpayers. Uh, apply in each district. Okay. Uh, Does anyone I'm, have the language? I'm, I'm trying to find the language here when it talks to. Are the you saying what's collected? I mean, generally, it's come from what's collected in Wayne County. So then you're saying breaking it down by district, or you're saying what each district is generated by each district. Exactly. Right. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Exactly. So that's that report that comes out and that comes from, you know, finance coming from the treasurer's office that would tell you the breakdown for each district. Uh, like in Detroit, you know, the Detroit commissioners were sharing that collective, um, collecting amount that's generated in your district. So I don't know if you're saying for your particular district inside of Detroit. I know, am. I okay. am concerned about my district, District 6, and what uh, monies that that fifteen percent. Um, now, what we would do, and what we will do is go. It. Yeah, what we would do is go back and ask because it's generated by uh, what's collected, but it's it's unique scenario in Detroit because it's, it's it's other commissioners in Detroit. So we'll go back and we'll check with the Treasury Department and Finance and see if you know they could give a breakdown within Detroit and then per your district. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kelly will be uh, giving us a report from MMB as well, and uh, so if if Alicia and her can uh, kind of get together, so we need the the dollar amount in each district, and also um, the projects themselves is what Commissioner McCormick says. And actually, it would be great for all of us to have that, and just for. Uh, Commissioner McCormick, even if Detroit is split and we don't get enough, we at least get $50,000 no matter how much our district collects because it's very hard to break it down uh, by district in Detroit, but each district in Detroit does get $50,000. Thank you, Madam Chair. Already. Madam Chair. Kelly, Kelly, you said you would send us that. Um... Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> okay. So what we're looking for is the numbers from Kelly and the projects from Alicia. Yes. And we'll get with the treasurer as well. Uh, I'll work with Bev and Alicia. Okay. Sounds good. How soon can we get that? I will have to contact the treasurer's office to see how long it would take them. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Anyone else? I have a question, Madam Chair. Okay. Commissioner Marecki. Uh, thank you. I'm wondering, um, has this ever been a 10-year knowledge? Why is it only a five-year? Have we done 10 in the past, maybe before I came on board? But... Um, how do you determine what's a 10-year millage and what's a five-year millage? I, I don't have the answer to that, uh, Madam Madam uh, Commissioner, uh, although I, I, I am cheating and I see uh, former former Chair Warnchick shaking his head no, indicating that it had not been a 10-year. Um, but I, I don't I don't have the, the history or the answer to if it ever had been, but I don't believe so. Okay. The rationale as to why not, I, I just don't have the answer for you today. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson has his hand raised. Commissioner Anderson. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, and I don't know from the administration who else might be online, but uh, is the administration uh, willing to provide a letter to the commission uh, on the renewal of this, that there will not be any more park property sold? <laughs> for, the length of this, for the length of this millage? Uh, uh, can I, can no, I no, no, Commissioner. Respectfully. That's going to be a problem. Thank you. 
<laughs> Anyone else? Kelly has her hand raised, Commissioner. Who does? Kelly. Kelly. Kelly uh, Rao. Yes, Kelly Rao. Just, there was a question from Terrence, I think, back in just a couple days ago regarding the Parks Millage and Scott Vander Vandermergel had provided information to Terrence regarding the Parks Millage and why it was five years. Um, so he may be able to provide more detailed information, Scott or Terrence. Okay, thank I can you. forward that uh, Mark Abo also has the email that may provide more details for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Ma Madam Chair, this is Andrew Candrevis. Yes. If I can, I just want to remind everybody that, you know, the renewal has to be very strictly written. So it's clearly a renewal. Um, I don't know about why it was five years or 10, why it wasn't 10 years or if that's legal or not initially, but just remember as a, um, as a renewal, you have to keep the same terms, the same rate. Uh, so it's not really a question for us right now. If we wanted to do a renewal and change the years, uh, it would clearly have to be a new millage uh, for a different length of years if it was even legally possible. Anyone else? Commissioner Palomero has his hand raised. Commissioner Palomero. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would move placing the Parks Millage Renewal on August 4th primary Support, ballot. support, as as, Thank you. As amended. As amended. Thank you. It's been moved and supported. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Next item, please. Item E4, requesting commission approval of a resolution authorizing Wayne County's delinquent tax revolving fund borrowings from 2020 based on 2019 delinquent taxes. Okay, who's here on this item? Uh, <clears throat> Craig Hammond from Dickinson Rights here. We're the outside bound council. Thank you. And Carl Stafford as well. Uh, you have the floor. I, will, I can go ahead and introduce this resolution and describe it, and then uh, and then I'll stop talking. And, and uh, Carl may want to add a few comments. But this resolution is the um, same that the county has approved in prior years for the tax. Excuse me, excuse me one second. Could everybody mute their phones? We have a feedback. Someone's talking on their phone. Commissioner, I can mute everyone and then unmute yourself and Craig if you can wait one second. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you, uh, so I'll start over. I'm, I'm Craig Hammond. I'm with the law firm of Dickinson Wright and our firm is the Council to the county in connection with their delinquent tax revolving fund program. And the resolution that's before you is similar to resolutions that the county approves each year uh, in connection with the renewal of this program and the issuance of, of delinquent tax revolving fund notes each year by the county treasurer. Um, the, uh, this year's resolution um, would authorize the county treasurer to issue delinquent tax revolving notes in an amount not to exceed $190 million. It authorizes the, uh, uh, the treasurer to create uh, the delinquent tax revolving fund for 2020. Um, and it authorizes the creation of a note reserve in an amount not to exceed 15% of the principal amount of the notes. It pledges the county's limited tax full faith and credit to secure those notes, which is how it's customarily done each year. And it authorizes uh, certain continuing disclosure undertakings uh, as required by the SEC Rule 15C212, which is again uh, customary. And finally, it authorizes the refinancing of those notes in the future if the county treasurer determined it would result in any uh, debt service savings. But otherwise, this is this format of this resolution is consistent with the uh, form that the county has been has seen in prior years. And I'll I'll, I'll stop talking now. Okay, thank you. Any questions by members? 
You can unmute the members, please. One moment. Can we have the commissioners please unmute themselves? There's several that I have to go down the line and I don't want to miss anyone. Okay. Any discussion? Any Anybody have any uh, questions on this item? Commissioner Mark Abel has his hand raised. Mr. Abel. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and, and this is for either Craig or, or Carl. C could you talk about the distinction between a pledge and a reserve? Because I'm looking at section 107 uh, B. It says the 2020 note reserves shall not exceed 15% of the principal amount of the 2020 notes. So how exactly does that work? So this is an amount in excess, so we can borrow additional monies. And I'm looking at the computation of how we determine what the note borrowing is gonna be. and and and. The, the response to our inquiry was that it should come to about $171 million and we're starting with the gross receivables, less exclusions uh, to come down to the 171. So let's look, can, can we talk about exactly the differentiation between a, a reserve and a pledge? Carl, would you like me to answer? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, the reserve is, is cash on hand with the treasurer. There's not an intention to borrow for that money. Um, and historically they, they have, so they, will set us, they will set aside those funds and pledge those as security for the notes. And um, uh, that's, you know, so that's basically a cash collateral account equal to, I think, it, although it's up to 50%, I think in prior years and this year, the expectation would be 10% is what they'll keep set aside as the reserve. Um, and that's, you know, separate from the discussion we had about the pledge of the county's tax credit. That's a, that's, that's the general fund that's, that would be at risk there. Mark. Okay. Um, section 105 of, of, of the, uh, the document suggests, implies all collections are subject to the lien. So, can you? T how is that consistent with the reserve or pledge amount that we're talking about of ten percent? So, if, if we collect um, monies, which is like the, the interest on the notes, uh, plus the delinquent taxes, plus any fees associated with the delinquency, and we get beyond ten percent, is the entire amount pledged to to these notes, or is it just limited to ten percent? Uh, no, 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 no. So. Uh... I guess I didn't explain this quite enough. The 10% note reserve, that's cash on hand currently in the program that is not otherwise pledged to any other notes. So that's sort of, the, the, those are funds available to service additional credit support for this program. All, <clears throat> and by statute, all the delinquent taxes that have been pledged for the notes are, you know, are pledged. And as they're collected, they're, they're used to repay the debt. It's not 10% of those delinquent taxes, it's 100% of the delinquent taxes are pledged to secure the notes. And this note reserve is an additional cash collateral that's there as additional support. So that in the event, the, the, uh, the collections of delinquent taxes were less than anticipated, there was some shortfall, there'd be this, there's this available cash to make up for any deficiencies. But that 10% that is additional cash beyond the delinquent taxes that have been pledged for the program. So any of the earnings of the fund beyond the delinquent taxes themselves, as an example, there's a 4% delinquency fee as soon as you become delinquent, plus interest on that. All of that remains as collateral against, against the bonds until the bonds are fully paid, or can any of it be uh, 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 released from the 2020 fund? No, your first statement was correct. It, all of it is pledged to the notes and cannot be... It's not available. It's not excess that can be released until the notes are repaid. Okay, but as soon as the notes are repaid, then the entire amount is available. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Right. That's right. And that's why, and that's what results in the treasurer having at least, 
you know, the treasurer needs to have enough money to satisfy its note reserve requirement, which is what we've done. And then obviously the amounts have been pledged here, but that's how you end up with excess revenues once the obligation is paid off. Okay, and I have one more question for Carl. Sure. Uh, after we go through the process, if there are any unpaid uh, delinquent taxes, those get charged back to the communities so that they originated. How do we transfer the unpaid delinquent taxes back to the respective communities? So when we're reimbursing them, when we're reimbursing them. Mr. Crawford? Carly. Technical difficulties. We have a hard time hearing you. Breaking up. I messaged him and I'm not sure why we can't tell him. I'm not sure why we can't tell him. Commissioner, I'm going to mute everyone. And Mr. Stafford, may you please unmute yourself? We still hear, we still hear a little feedback. Okay, I don't know why. Uh, Craig, can you hear me? You're much clearer now. Yes. Uh, uh, break up. Explain that to the, the charge back. The taxes, the uncollected taxes remain at the treasurer's office. And the local taxes, the receipts are turned over to the local communities. So the charge back concept is simply if we do not collect taxes that are pledged to the bills, that amount is charged back to the locals, but the, the actual receivables remain with the treasurer. Yeah. Do you repeat it again because you were not very clear. Not very clear. Craig, can you explain that for me, please? Okay. Mark, I, I, let me just make sure I understand the question. You're asking about the process for chargebacks, right? Well, Mark, you're on mute right now. I'm sorry. If there are taxes, delinquent taxes that are remain unpaid with respect to any community, at the end of a, a period of time, th those monies, uh, my understanding, are reimbursed to the county. So that, that the responsibility for collect, although we may actually do the collection, the, the, the community is responsible for the delinquency at that point. So we may actually go through the process of collecting it, but my understanding is that we reimbur reimbur reimbursed in the form of cash for any delinquency and that, cash that we received is then used to pay back the bonds. Is that correct? That, that's correct. It, you, that, you had a correct summary there. Yes. The, 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 the risk of ultimately these taxes not being paid is passed through to the local communities to charge back. Okay. So, so when we reimburse the communities for the 2020 taxes, we will deduct from that any unpaid prior delinquencies that have that remain on the books is that correct yes I, I believe the chargebacks are usually done annually in connection with each borrowing cycle that they but that's, those, that's when they'll settle up but those charge Carl, is that a true statement right yep. but those chargebacks will not be used to reduce the amount of uh, funding that we get on the bonds is that correct it will not affect the funding of these notes because the chargebacks will relate to prior years shortfalls, not okay. the current year. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that, that was clear. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Madam Chair, yes. Thank you. Um, Commissioner McCormick. Yes. Uh, so this year, since we uh, started a program, the, the pay to stay program, as well as we are not collecting uh, delinquent taxes, how is that going to affect future repayments? All right, well, I, I'll try to answer that. So the, the PAYS program, which would allow uh, property owners who meet the poverty exemption, they'd have the right to come in and seek relief on their property tax payment program. And I think to the extent those properties have been identified, they are not included in this delinquent tax revolving fund program. They will be excluded and not borrowed against. Now it's possible that if some, after we issue these notes, for then for the first time a property owner seeks to have their property taxes adjusted on this PACE program, then that could happen and that could, you know, affect the revenues collected for that particular property. But we, but the county treasurer's office tries to screen those out to the extent they can be identified up front. They're excluded from the program and not borrowed against, so that so that the local municipality does not get the benefit of borrowing against those taxes. But if it does arise subsequently, yes, it does. It could affect the revenue. But the expectation is that that's why we have this note reserve to provide additional source of funds to make up for any shortfall. And the expectation is that you know that, that the amounts of properties that will be participating in the PAYS program that were not previously excluded, you know, would not be, would, would not be so much that it would not be adequately covered by the note reserves that are being held. So, so is there a, um, a, a time limit on applying for that? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I believe under this PAYS program, you can apply at any time, but if you have applied for this program and you're identified now, your property is not going to be included in this delinquent tax revolving fund program. We will not be borrowing against those taxes, and therefore you're just you're outside this program. So whatever you're whatever you're going to work out under this PAYS program, if you're outside this program, then those those monies would just go directly to the municipality. They're not, you know, the county treasurer is just collecting those for the benefit of the municipality. They're not being borrowed against under this by these notes. Okay, but there is potential for you to borrow against if someone didn't apply and they come later. And, and later, then then they would be in that uh, in that loop. Then that's right. That, that's right. Okay. And and I think the expectation is that you know the it's better to work things out with these property owners than to put them in foreclosure. Uh, yes, also, it is. But we but. You know that's the benefit of that's one of the reasons why we need this note reserve fund to provide that cushion so the treasurer has the ability to work out repayment plans that may reduce the revenue stream but doesn't affect the county's ability to repay the notes because they have enough cash reserves on hand to, to deal with potential uh, um, adjustments to revenue stream. great that makes sense thank you mm -hmm. thank you anyone else Okay, uh, commissioners unmuted themselves. Or good. I'll move approval. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Item E5. Requesting commission approval of the revised capital improvement plan 2020B. Thank you. Who wants to go first on this item? Is Bev, Bev still on the line? I think that was for her department. Hi, this is Beverly. I'm sorry, uh, Beverly from DPS. <laughs> is there a question? I'm sorry, I missed a question. Uh, there was no question. I just wanted to know uh, if you would tell us a little bit about it. Yes, and I do have Elizabeth Taylor uh, from my engineering division. She's on the line as well. Um, this probably is a, a, a up-to-date view of our capital plan uh, for this year. But Elizabeth or Ron, I know you guys are on the line as well.
Whoever wants to identify yes. yourself for the record. Are they muted maybe? They shouldn't be muted. Suzanne, you're on the line too. Director, DPS Finance. I'm on the line. Ron's muted. He's talking, but he's on mute. Ron, unmute. You'll know you unmuted okay. when the little red microphone is not there. You'll know you're unmuted. If Hi, Ron. Red, Hi. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, each year we submit the engineering division CIP uh, that gets approved by the uh, commission with the budget that starts April 1st. That CIP is initiated in March and April of the previous year. And we are anticipating what gets constructed in calendar year 19 and what gets constructed in calendar year 20. Uh, this is an adjustment to uh, bring uh, everything up to date. The biggest change in the program is the top two lines <coughs> of the program, Allen Road and Van Horn Roads, and then the Allen Road CN Railroad. Those have become real funded projects and have uh, now are, and now are uh, scheduled to start to start this year. Thank you. Any any questions from members? Yes, Madam Chair. Commissioner Anderson. Uh, to uh, Either Bev, I, I guess it would either be Bev or for Ron. Um, just a question on the uh, projects that are on there. We, we are only going out. It has a five-year capital improvement plan heading at the top. We are only going out two years. Correct? So I guess the same thing I've mentioned in years past is why don't we have something lined up for further? Uh, is that, is there, is there another, I, I, cause it, it, it seems, you know, a bit misleading to, to say it's a five year plan when we're not near there. Well, I can, uh, this is Beverly, Director of DPS. I'm gonna let Ron uh, answer on the technical part about the projects, but as all the commissioners know, we retained a company to help us develop a 10 year asset management plan so of course we're gonna have uh, the two year plan, but that process is still ongoing. So as we work with FAC committees and as we're getting the data, working with the consultant, working with our team to help us develop this asset management plan, we don't wanna put a plan out there and get ahead of all the work that we retain them to do and assist us with, uh, Commissioner. So to your point, we really wanna get beyond it and, and put out a 10 year plan. So we can't wait to get to that point. Uh, so you're absolutely correct. Uh, Ron can speak to now why the two year, but that kind of gives you an idea of why we haven't put that out. But our ultimate goal is really to have a 10 year plan. You know when that's going to be done? Yeah, that's the next question because I think we've got under contract with this company. Uh, wasn't it year before last? Yeah, and their contract is a five year contract. <laughs> So their contract is a five-year contract, and it takes a lot. It's a lot of data that goes into this. You just don't um, do a five-year plan or a 10-year plan, I mean, develop an asset management plan in one to two years. It's a very, very enormous and huge project and undertaking to get to that, especially being the largest county in this state. It's a lot that goes into that, a lot of data collecting, a lot of processes, a lot of review. And we're talking about not just roads, that includes our bridges and our culverts. So it's a lot of work that goes into developing a major asset management plan. But you're absolutely right. We concur with you. That's exactly where we want to go as well. So Ron, I don't know if you want to speak specifically just to the two year. I know that deals with uh, the FAC committee and what we have now as we're working with our consultant to develop that long-term plan. Ron? Just I want to point out that as um, we, we use the current uh, data for the road condition and uh, as time goes on, uh, road conditions change at different rates. So if we pick a road three years or four years down the road, but something else gets worse at a faster rate, we want to make sure we have that ability to move that road ahead of the one that is not deteriorating as fast. I understand that uh, that to be the case, uh, but I think that would be the case whether it's two years, three years, five years, or ten years. Correct? I mean, it would 
it's always subject to change based on the conditions of the conditions of the roads uh, that may be ahead uh, of the schedule uh, if one deteriorates worse and needs to be uh, replaced sooner. I, I think we understand that. I appreciate that. But I'd like to see, uh, as the chair mentioned, uh, us to get an update on where the company is at on their work. Just a brief update on that. Yes, and absolutely. This is Beverly again, and you will. And actually, we were right before uh, the COVID-19 hit and the you know, the, the stay-at-home orders hit. We were all scheduling through Andy, through the chair, where we could come back and give you an update. Also, on one point you just mentioned, you're absolutely correct. But one thing, keep in mind with this 10-year asset plan we'll also do is a large part of it is going to be preventative maintenance. In the past, not just road, Wayne County's road agency, a lot of agencies throughout the state, you only had to focus on the bad roads because that's all the funding that we had. We want to do that, but we also want to do preventative maintenance that's going to really make our money go longer. If we just repaired a road, for example, three years ago, and then we just focus on the bad road, if we don't do preventative maintenance to that road, you're right, it's going to deteriorate. So this whole plan and, and, and method going into how you manage your roads and your bridges will go a long way in help slowing down that deterioration once we've done some improvement. So it's going to be a whole key to this. So to your point, you're absolutely correct. Absolutely necessary, the maintenance program. Thank you. Commissioner Baker McCormick. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as we look at the uh, plan, I guess the, the two year plan, I think I've um, asked you some time ago about Six Mile Road between Telegraph and Grand River. Uh, has that been looked at or assessed, assessed in your report uh, to determine um, when that would be repaired? You know, working remotely, I don't have that information at my fingertips. Okay. Could you um, make sure that Dr. Baker McCormick gets that answer? Yes. Uh, again, that's on uh, West McNichols between Grand River and Telegraph. And then the second question pertains to, I don't know if it is um, in this, it's, it has nothing to do with your report here, but as far as the grass on Otter Drive and um, cutting uh, and any litter pickup, do you know when that will start and um, what does that look like at this point? Madam Chair? Yes. Hi, Andrew Candrevis. Um, to the commissioner's question, I mean, I can get with our roads department and ask because of what's been happening with COVID, obviously our, um, our vendors and all other landscapers have been pushed back. So I can try to get an updated, um, an update for all commissioners about when uh, our rotations and our program will start up again. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Baker McCormick? No, that was it. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Alrighty. Um, do I hear a motion? So move. I'll move it. Board. It's been, this is a communication, so we just have to file, receive and file. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Item E6, a communication for in the statements of chargebacks for the period of October 1st, 2018 through September 30th, 2019. Thank you. Would, um, I'll receive and file or move to receive and file. Is, that, is this a receive and file? Yes, it is. Okay. Do you, are there any questions from members? In that case, um, all in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Item F, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. I don't have anything, Kelly. Do you have any anything you want us to be aware of? Um, I don't have anything at this time. We are uh, moving through budget adjustments, amendments to be um, submitted um, for our next scheduled meeting. We are also working um, on the revised budget for this year as well as next year's budget. So more to follow. How, Madam is, Chair? how is that coming along? Uh, there's a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Uh, all the elected officials have been uh, uh, asked to um, give their budgets yet? Not at this time. We've been providing the revenue estimates from the uh, departments and electeds. Okay. Commissioner uh, Marecki. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's my understanding that the county received the CARE Act money uh, about 10 days ago, uh, quite a chunk of money, and I'm wondering how the commissions, or how Ways and Means, and then the commission's going to fit into this. If this will be, maybe this is towards Kelly, if we will have to um, certify the money's coming in, and how it's about $180 million is my understanding. We'll be uh, submitting something in the next couple of days through Ways and Means to certify those funding, as okay. well as uh, provide some type of uh, budget source where we're going to spend the money. Um, we're trying to determine a plan at this time how we would um, have the departments requesting their portion that they need for COVID-related expenditures. So we are, um, in the next couple of days, we'll provide something to commission. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam the Chair, yes. this is El Hades. Yes. Money, is the money restricted? It is, yes, for COVID-related items. Only, we can't use it for anything else. Not at this time. Thank you. Kelly, the, the question has been asked many a times, can we use that for personnel salary? Only if it is related to COVID. Um, there's can you, various... Can you give us um, an example? We cannot, um, re we cannot apply the funding to anything that is currently in the budget. So if we had to hire somebody to run some type of COVID uh, PPE distribution or something to that extent, then we could use it for that additional salary. So it's strictly um, related to new items related to COVID, not what's currently in the budget. Okay, since we brought that subject up, any uh, members um, or any commissioners have a question on that? Yes, and this is El Harris again. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in case, in case we didn't use all the money with the restriction applied to it, is that money go back to the federal or the county have the right to move it to different areas? No, at this time it would need to go back unless something changes through the legislature. Uh, and Mr. Madam Chair. Andy yes. Kandrivas, if I could just add um, to the commissioner's question, we do have until the end of this year, the money would have to be, or the cost would have to be um, realized uh, by the end of the year. So we're not in danger of losing that money, you know, in the next couple of weeks or anything like that. We are formulating a plan and we'll bring it to you on how we should use that. But uh, we do have until the end of the calendar year uh, for that money to stay with Wayne County. Thank you. Any other Ma yeah, Madam Chair, this is uh, Commissioner Baydoun. So Kelly, Kelly, for example, uh, speak of the CARE uh, Act money. We could uh, we could hire a person to be standing downstairs in the lobby with a thermometer, checking everybody that comes in their their temperature to see if they have fevers. That would be considered COVID nineteen related, correct? I believe that would be a qualified expenditure. Yes. Thank you. I, I have a question, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Kelly, would, 
would would this qualify if we had taken the two million dollars out for the loan program uh, for the business loans? Would that be something that we could refill in the general fund through that money? I would have to do some research on that. I cannot answer that at this time. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Before we adjourn, Ma I, Madam Chair. Oh. Yes, one one second, please. Uh, oh, sure. Item five, I should not have said file and receive and file. That was an item that we needed to approve. So, uh, Madam Clerk, who made the, uh, the motion? I believe I did. I, have I believe I did. Okay. Just it's Commissioner McCormick. Okay. And I support by Commissioner Palomera. Okay. Uh, would you change it to approve instead of receive and file? Madam, Madam Chair, this is Felicia. May I interrupt, yes. please? So can we get a motion for reconsideration of that item? And then you'll need a new motion that will be properly to approve, I mean, to approve it. Okay. We can. Mo In that motion case, for reconsideration. Okay. It's been moved and supported. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. It's been uh, reconsidered. Now item five. Could I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Support. Support. It's been supported. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Now under such other matters, I had Commissioner Schatz. Was it you? Someone wanted to ask a question. Uh, that was probably me, unless okay. you saw her hand. Okay. okay, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Marecki brought up the uh, small business loans. Uh, is there a, an update on where we are uh, with with the first batch of of funds? Do we have any funds left? I will have to get with uh, Khalil. Yeah. Yeah, Madam and Chair, uh, Andrew Kandrivas here. Uh, to the Commissioner's question, um, I think I can get an update and maybe even a full board. Um, there could be an update depending on, uh, I think Mr. Rahal is available for that call. So somebody from his team can probably give an update on the program. If not Thursday, um, you know, we'll get something together for you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Under yes. Other matters? Yeah. Yes, this is Alicia. Alicia? Alicia Bell. Oh, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair. <laughs> if I may, uh, yeah. to the point with the CARES funds, uh, NACO, along with all of the counties throughout the country, are working to... Um, lobby Congress to have that money uh, dedicated to include revenue loss. So that's something that's actively being lobbied for in Congress because, as you know, many municipalities are facing the same type of revenue loss that we are. So, but at the moment, those funds are just for COVID related expenses. But we're hoping to either have another congressional package to deal with revenue loss or to have the current one amended. Uh, that's number one. The second is to uh, Commissioner McCormick's question about the um, uh, where we are with the funds for all of the loans. Uh, we do have a uh, economic development meeting scheduled for next week. So um, hopefully we can get a deeper dive into that when we have our committee meetings uh, next week. So I just want to make the mention of those two items. Thank you. Anyone else? Understand and Madam Chair, if I can. Um, yeah. Commissioner Anderson. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, had a question for Kelly through the chair. Uh, Kelly, uh, Commissioner Colleen uh, had sent a message and asked, and I guess this would be the proper time to ask, uh, has the money for uh, the extension service been zeroed out of the budget right at this point? I'm, I'm sorry, you broke up. He, uh, Commissioner Colleen asked a question. I don't think he's on the call, uh, but he's asking if that has been zeroed out, the uh, Michigan State Extension Service, uh, the amount that they had in current year. We have not touched that at this time. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All righty. Then uh, next item, please. Item G, public comment. All the public unmuted. Um, I have a question. I'm, I'm a public comment. I'm president of Ask Me 1659. My name is Darlene Buffington. Go ahead. Um, I have a question in regards to the CARE Act funding money. Um, my locals haven't received any COVID-19 PPE since it has occurred. And I have expressed this to labor and other entities. Um, I'm wondering with the CARE Act fund monies that are coming in, will this be immediately dispersed to protect our workers that are and have been working primarily through this COVID-19 situation with all the outbreaks through the sheriff's departments, the jails, Wayne County courts, and et cetera. And my second question is, will the employees that are being laid off currently that are non-supervisory be included in the thought process of hiring to take temperate or whatever in the buildings when you use this funding to use towards the COVID-19 monetary. Thank you. Thank you. We will try to get you the answers to that. Anyone else under public comments? Yes, Madam Chair, my hand's raised. Who is that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. How soon we forget. <laughs> yeah. I didn't recognize the voice real quick. Okay, go ahead. Right. Um, uh, under public comment, I'd like to comment on the uh, two tax proposals that have been moved to the full board for consideration on Thursday. Um, uh, the uh, I've always, as most of you will remember, I always preferred to uh, avoid tax votes in primary elections because of the uh, relatively small turnout. And I suspect that the turnout will be even smaller than usual this year because of the health crisis going on. I understand a, a rationale for the operating millage because if you don't have it approved in August, then you'll be budgeting for the October 1st fiscal year without knowing whether or not you'll have those funds available. Uh, the parks millage, however, is a different story, and I think it's uh, much more appropriate for the parks millage to go on uh, the general election ballot this uh, November when uh, a great deal more people will be participating. The parks millage doesn't need to be renewed until uh, November of 2021. So um, I see the reasoning behind the operating millage going on the primary ballot. Uh, but not the parks millage. I think it's, it's unfair to voters to not let as many voters as possible have a shot at that. I realize they can come out and vote, but we know that they will not as in great numbers. And one other thing on the operating renewal, uh, the language mirrors what we used in 2009. I was not chair at the time, but um, I, I've read the language that will actually appear on the ballot. Um, it seems to me to be biased by omission and might be challengeable with the, uh, with the county clerk's office. Uh, I wanna make you, uh, I wanna warn you that that's a possibility because uh, in my opinion anyway, the, the ballot language says uh, this money will be used for programs including public safety, senior citizens um, and other good things. Only good programs that people will like are listed in the ballot language. However, it's general fund money, which means that money will go into the full pot of money that will also go, go toward debt service. It will go toward uh, elected official salaries. It will go toward uh, lawsuit settlements. Um, my point is that if only the positive programs are listed in the ballot language, uh, and that most voters won't see that until they get into the, into the voting booth, then um, they, they won't have a full picture of it. I understand you can't list all of the programs, but if there was some sort of amendment to the language to say, and all other general fund programs, that would at least be fairer than to make it look like it's a public safety millage, a senior citizen millage, um, or other good programs that are listed. And with that, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for uh, allowing me to participate in public comment. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else under public comments?
I will add one little um, thing before we adjourn. Terrence, did you have something to add? I'm sorry, I may have missed your comment. Uh, Madam Chair, no, it was regarding number five. It needed to be approved and not receiving file. Okay, thank you for that catch. Uh, next item, Madam Clerk. Item H, adjournment. If I hear no other people who want to talk, we'll adjourn. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. It's been moved and supported. Support. I thought so. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item. There is none. <laughs> <laughs> All over. That was, a, that was a trick thing to put in there. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you all for uh, for joining us today, and we'll see you at, at our next um, regular meeting and probably next week or the week after, I'm not sure. All these days are running together. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Helen. Bye. Bye.